On-farm biosecurity is essential for all poultry operations and like any insurance policy is a prudent investment. As poultry farm staff and managers, you have a legal responsibility to identify and manage any biosecurity risks relevant to your farm. Biosecurity is the practical measures taken to prevent or control the introduction and spread of infectious diseases and food safety pathogens to a flock. Following daily biosecurity procedures will help to produce healthy and productive poultry and food that is safe for consumers. This presentation will give a practical overview of the general biosecurity measures that can be implemented on conventional and free-range poultry meat farms and the requirements expected of all people working on these farms. All production facilities are different, so it's important to become familiar with all biosecurity requirements relevant to where you're working. Poultry meat production has several process stages and biosecurity risks can occur in each stage. The potential for disease to enter or exit the property represent the greatest risks. The main ways that pathogens spread is through contaminated people, including clothing and shoes, contaminated vehicles and equipment, contaminated litter, wild birds, rodents, feral animals, insects, livestock and domestic pets, contaminated feed and water, poultry movement, including mortalities, and through the air. We'll look at each area and show how these biosecurity risks can be managed to prevent or minimise disease and pathogen spread. A copy of all biosecurity resource materials relevant to your operation must be kept on site. You must be familiar with individual biosecurity requirements and all staff must be trained in the biosecurity practices specific to their role. All training must be recorded. Refer to your state biosecurity legislation for state-specific requirements. The production area boundary and the area surrounding the shed and range are important biosecurity barriers to prevent the entry of disease and food safety pathogens to flocks. To keep these boundaries secure, fence both the production and range areas, preferably with large animal-proof fencing. The transfer of animal faeces into sheds and ranges is a bird health and food safety risk. Have clearly defined entry points for vehicles. Have biosecurity signage at each entrance with directions to contact the farm manager before entry. Lock entry gates whenever practical. Have a clearly signed visitor's parking area located outside the production area. Have a change area located away from the sheds and ranges that contains clean protective clothing and footwear. People movement and cleanliness is one of the biggest risks for disease spread. Food safety and disease pathogens can be carried on people, including their hands, hair, clothing and footwear, and personal equipment such as mobile phones. To reduce the risk, farm staff and residents must sign a personal quarantine declaration that restricts their contact with other birds, pigs, manure and contaminated premises. Farm staff must wear clean laundered clothing at the beginning of every workday and not wear farm footwear off the farm. All visitors, including contractors and suppliers, must be approved by management, sign the visitor's log and ideally wear protective clothing and footwear if entering the sheds or range area with the birds. Staff and all visitors who have recently recovered from or are still suffering from a gastrointestinal disease or infectious respiratory disease should not enter the production area until they're fully recovered. Always work from the cleanest areas first, such as younger to older flocks and from healthy to unhealthy flocks. Routine maintenance should be restricted to occur between batches and before final disinfection. Most delivery vehicles will deliver to more than one poultry farm each day, increasing the risk of disease spread. Drivers of any vehicle that needs to enter the production area must not enter sheds or ranges. 
Any equipment should be cleaned to remove any visible dirt and sanitised before entering sheds or ranges. Farms should be equipped with facilities to sanitise equipment before entry. Disease and food safety pathogens survive in soil and the environment, so contaminated footwear can transfer pathogens into sheds and ranges. At each shed and range entry, scrape the soles of shoes so they're free of soil. Dip feet in foot bath containing approved disinfectant. Sanitise your hands. Inspect foot baths daily and remove any soil, litter or other organic material. Replace contents regularly to maintain the required concentration of disinfectant. In exposed areas, use a weatherproof cover to avoid dilution of the disinfectant from rain. A designated set of shed boots for each shed could also be used. Contaminated litter can introduce pathogens and wet litter can encourage the growth of harmful microorganisms. To reduce these risks, purchase litter from a reputable supplier and have it delivered in clean, disinfected trucks. Don't source litter from treated timber. Store litter in a clean, dry, biosecure storage area, free from contamination by rodents, birds, animals and residues. Avoid wet litter by managing drinkers, ventilation systems and working litter as necessary. Rodents, vermin and insects can carry and spread disease and food safety pathogens. A vermin control plan must be implemented. Place bait stations on the ground in areas of rodent activity and at fixed intervals around shed perimeters. Number and map every bait station. Check bait stations at least once a week. Record bait intake and add fresh baits as required. Focus control efforts on areas of high activity. Enclosed bait stations protect bait from moisture and dust and prevent non-target animals from accessing bait. Only use baits that contain AVPMA approved active ingredients and can be securely tied down so rodents can't remove or scatter bait. Keep grass mown and weeds under control in the production area. Remove rubbish, equipment or debris away from the sheds as it can act as a rodent haven. Collect and safely dispose of dead rodents regularly. Maintain shed walls to restrict the entry of rodents and other vermin. Control insects with chemicals approved by the APVMA for use on poultry farms. Wild birds can transmit diseases and food safety pathogens such as salmonella. Wild bird surveys show that wild birds, especially waterfowl, at times carry avian influenza and present a risk in terms of spreading this disease. Sheds must be wild bird and animal proof. If a wild bird enters the shed, remove it immediately and repair the suspected entry point. Dams or other surface water attract waterfowl and ducks and should not be located within the production area. Keep range areas well drained to avoid puddles or water pooling. Don't provide feed or water on the range as it can attract wild birds and rodents. Clean up feed spills under silos. For shade on the range, vegetation buffers and shelter belts, choose trees and shrubs that minimise wild bird attraction. Alternatives to trees on the range are structures covered with shade cloth or sails. Long grass can attract wild birds and rodents. Keep grass on the range area short and don't let it seed. Domestic dogs and cats must not enter sheds. Guard dogs that protect birds should be tested to see if they are carriers of disease or food safety pathogens before initial contact with poultry. Surface water sources such as dam, river and tank water may be contaminated from wild birds and waterfowl. 
Many poultry diseases and food safety pathogens can survive for a long time in water and potentially infect your flock. Any water used for drinking and shed cooling on a poultry farm must meet the microbiological standards specified in the National Farm Biosecurity Manual for chicken growers. All surface water and any other water that doesn't meet this standard must be treated appropriately before use, for example by chlorination and any corrective action recorded. Check and record chlorine and treatment levels daily. Once treated, all water must be stored in a closed system from the point of treatment to the drinker in order to prevent recontamination. Dead birds may be infected with disease and food safety pathogens. Collect all mortalities and culled birds from sheds and ranges daily and record details. All containers used for collecting dead birds must be cleaned and disinfected before being returned to the production area. If collection is infrequent, store dead birds in a freezer, which must be cleaned and sanitised between collections. Where dead birds are collected by a contractor, the collection area must be as far away from the production area as practical, so the collection vehicle doesn't enter the site. Dead birds may also be composted in purpose-built structures. End of batch procedures are essential to reduce any pathogen buildup before the next batch of poultry is delivered. At the end of each batch, clean and disinfect sheds and equipment according to the processes instructions using approved chemicals. After pickup, cleaning and disinfection, keep shed doors closed to prevent wild birds or animals from entering. For free range farms, remove manure outside hatch openings and scrape and clean ramps to the range area. Litter can be reused in parts or all of the shed according to the processor's instructions, but should be pasteurised by windrowing the used litter at the end of the batch. Litter that has been windrowed can be re-spread after four to seven days of the pasteurisation process. Don't stockpile any used litter or manure in the production area. Keeping routine records is important for production and performance purposes and also for demonstrating that you've met your biosecurity duty and obligations. Always keep records of deliveries, visitors including contractors, service people and vets, water usage, quality, chlorine levels and treatments, feed consumption, shed conditions, mortalities including culls, movements of poultry, movements of spent litter and rodent control. An action plan for supporting your farm's response to a suspected emergency animal disease outbreak or other emergency or disaster situation must be available on farm. This should include the circumstances when an alert should be raised, who to contact, and what high-level biosecurity measures need to be activated, such as quarantine procedures. In summary, biosecurity practices need to be a part of daily routine procedures. Remember to implement biosecurity practices at the farm boundary, with the entry of people, vehicles and equipment onto the farm, at every shed and range entry, with litter supply and management, with vermin and rodent control, by preventing wild birds and other animals, by providing water that is fit for purpose, through proper disposal of dead birds, and with end of batch procedures. Biosecurity is everyone's responsibility and will contribute towards producing healthy and productive poultry, keeping your farm operating and food that is safe for consumers.